Testing one, two. Testing, testing. Testing, yeah. Good afternoon, good evening, uh, good year, good guy, Philip Garcia on the show today. Um, episode of uh, Jason Rouse's Safe Word, and I am in fact the Jason Rouse. Um, that sounds like a crazy person talking. Right now? Yeah. You? Yeah. I didn't think <laughs> I didn't now, think it sounded that bad. Now, um, Philip. <laughs> uh the reason I, I was trying to earlier before, this is take thirty seven, by the way. Um <laughs> the reason I brought up Arlington um was um I'm a Pantera fan. Okay, yeah. And do you know the band Pantera? Of course. Did I see you at the Slipknot show? About Here? three years ago? No. No, okay. I remember running into a, a handful of comedians. At least I found out who the metalheads were. Because uh-huh. when I first moved to Austin, um, coming out of Communist Canada from uh, during COVID, I, um, under a tremendous amount of government restrictions and just general, uh, uh, what's the opposite of uh, utopia, Dis- Dystopia? I think so. Yeah. yeah it was literally just a, a, a nauseous, annoying hum of nervousness through the whole country. In and, Canada or here? In Canada. Hmm. So when I showed up here December 15th, three years ago, mm-hmm. uh, I immediately went to find live music. I knew comedy was happening as far as what Joe and uh, Chappelle were doing at Stubbs. Right. And um, there was a couple of miscellaneous comedy events going on in the, in the city that were kind of like a mishmash of old guard and new guard. Mm-hmm. And um, I immediately said, there's a fucking Slipknot concert here. Uh-huh. Okay. And people are getting fines for violating curfews in where I just left. Or it, I, was it at the Circuit of Americas? Uh, the Slipknot concert? The racetrack? Or no? Yeah, yeah, it was out. Yeah, 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 cool, yeah. Cool, cool. I went two years ago, not a year, three years ago, though. Okay, that's where that's where I was. Yeah. Were you on drugs? Yeah, I was I was on acid at the Slipknot concert. I, I met you there. <laughs> I, were you, who were you with? <laughs> so just, uh, Brittany, Darian. Yeah. 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 I yeah. distinctly, I didn't really know everyone that well. But yeah, I remember, I think I was told... Sp- the, by the way, this guy's on acid. So I gave you your distance. I didn't really want to kind of, hey, yeah. welcome to your nightmare. Yeah, it's there me. Was, half of us were on acid and half of us weren't. And there was a, there was a group of other people there with us too. But that what, we were all like, what would it be like if we took acid and went to go see Slipknot? I'm, my hands are sweating thinking about that. And I've taken a lot of LSD. You know, good, good energy though. That's what we were really constantly surprised by because we were on the lawn. Yeah. And we were like, wow, these people... They really love something. Darian was on acid too. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that's immediately shook my hand since I'm fucking on acid right now. I'm like, cool. It didn't really start to hit until like the end. So we were coming Ooh. up, getting there. Ooh. But the Uber pool ride home. What? Remember when there was like. You guys took an Uber packed in with a we, Darian? We weren't going to drive. We'd get like an Uber XL. And it's like one of those massive events. <laughs> the poor driver. I can't imagine what the conversation in there was like. We were quiet. We oh. were listening to like Maroon 5 and we were just fucking like, yeah. I'm at a pay yeah. phone. Yeah. Time of our lives. Um, but everyone's not talking. And <laughs> we're, 
it was like an hour long wait outside with all these other people while now being completely yeah. on acid in a parking lot. And the other, and the majority of that uh, audience, from what I could see, was on a, a kaleidoscope of substances from yeah. just drunk to, and an acid person and a drunk person is. That's a that's a dead end. Doesn't mix well. No. Yeah. We kind of made a circle and we kept it. Oh, safety. See, you guys Some are seal. seasoned. Yeah. I respect that. Yeah. And then we uh, had to go. We just spent, I had a really interesting, I played pool that night. Had some, like, Probably the best game of your life. Rain Man shit. Yeah. Yeah. I went off. Yeah. Um, I swear there was like a plaid carpet on the floor at seven grand. <laughs> yeah. I was using it to cut angles and stuff in yeah. my mind at least. Isn't it wild that with this literally this square piece of paper, uh -huh. smaller than your thumbnail, can make you play a, a, a medieval medieval game as pool as a, a futuristic time traveling <laughs> like game uh, player uh, player one? Yeah, yeah. It's like Tron. I was going to say Tron, but I didn't yeah. think you were old enough to know that movie. No, it, it, it was straight up like Tron. Yeah. The tracers on the ball and everything. I'm like, I, it all makes sense. I'm lining it up. I'm the game master. <laughs> <laughs> Did this thing... Something... Fuck. Oh, no. The Let GoPro check. turned God off. God damn it. <laughs> Bluetooth disconnected. Okay, so that dropped out. But uh, the camera is still recording, so we're gonna just. This is my uh, my producer and every because I probably got a message. Uh, anyway, I'm. You were kicking this guy to death in a parking lot, and what happened? You couldn't get hard. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what has happened. It's a. Uh, it's hard to. It's hard to put your penis in a throat that you just curb stomped. That's a. We just came back from commercial, so uh, you. You're there outside of the Slipknot concert, peaking at this point. Yeah. After a long metal show, mm -hmm. uh, who opened that? Oh, we weren't. We didn't go for that. No. I think it was like Ice Nine Kills or something like that. That's that. right. But we were just we were running late because we were on acid. Yeah. So uh, how many people were all on acid? Like five of you? Three of us. Good Four. for you guys. You guys were like an episode of Scooby Doo. Yeah. We went to we went to the <laughs> Slipknot concert. <laughs> when they they close with people equal shit. Yeah, that's about the time it was hitting, and we're like, wow. The, like I said once again, these people feel very strongly about some things, and that's very that's admirable of them. Like just very, very at one with the Slipknot. Yeah, Rome. No, it was one of the more uh, the pit was insane. I I saw the video. Uh, I was on the peripheral, uh -huh. um, and. Uh, this guy, I ended up talking to him afterwards. He was a guy from France. He'd just flown out that day. He'd been robbed uh, at, at some place he was in previously in Europe. Okay. He goes, I have nothing. I lost my passport. And he's got his arms up cheering in the middle of the circle. And this fucking guy cleans his clock, just takes him right <laughs> out. And then the crowd just swallows him and he was gone. It was wild. He's just there. No one's in the middle. Look, everyone's clearly trying to avoid a head-on collision. And this guy lined himself up, and this guy took him out. I'll show you the clip later, but uh, says, it, it was epic. I've seen some everything. amazing belly flops on the concrete at shows. <laughs> at a, a Faith No More show in Portland. Faith No More? Yeah. Do you know Faith No More? Like, Sunday? <laughs> Wait, yeah, like that Lionel Richie song? Yeah. Yeah. They play hardcore music? Am I not? Am I missing something here? I guess I've only ever heard the cover of that song. No way. So in my mind, I'm thinking, how the hell does a how the hell does someone no, open up? No, that's the what you know of faith, no faith no more. Now yeah. listen, I'm a, a a Mike Patton geek, okay. and he is the singer from that band, Faith No More. Okay. Previously from a band called Mr. Bungle, which might be in my top five music artists huh. of all time. And for you to have this one-hit wonder obs observation of something I know the catalog and detail and yeah. been to hundreds of shows, does Faith No More play heavy music, which yeah. is hilarious. Yeah, to me, they're just like this soft core cover, or they did a cover and nicely with them. Uh, rock and roll, uh, <laughs> for sure. Uh -huh. uh, metal, no. This is the thing is you would have these 
ballads and then some very abstract, aggressive, heavy music. Hmm. Um, I need to get more into them, I guess. You should go through it. I'm yeah. biased, though, because every single album, like, is it completely different from the... You can't even... This is, the sounds don't continue. The only thing you'll recognize is the singer's voice, where the music and, and the genre crossings are all over the place. Hmm. Uh, yet they did have uh, radio success in the 90s. Hmm. Like a king... Like a... King Gizzard. Have you heard of this band? King Gizzard and the Lizard, Wiz Lizard Wizard? No. They make like every single album as a different experiment. Yeah. They like one album that goes through all the different modes. Trans Am is another band that did made sure that every, Al I think every song was all different genre. Ween, would, Ween did all that shit too. Ween, yeah. I, they put out a whole country album. They hired world-class country session musicians. Uh -huh. Didn't ex tell them really what they were getting involved with, record all the songs, and then wrote all the crazy lyrics afterwards. Ween did that? Yeah. Ween is, Ween is so straight. But then they make the song Ocean Man. This is what Faith No More is like, <laughs> except with dick and balls. Okay. Yeah. Ween is more of a, a, a I would think, like a, a nerdy... <clears throat> no one's breaking out into a fist fight at a Ween concert. Nah, people are burning good tree at if at if we Yeah, concert. like Clutch would be another one. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, I'm hmm. rambling now. It's so an interesting kicking band. this guy to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we were talking about music earlier, and you also brought up a, another uh, artist that I'm a huge fan of, mm -hmm. and um, Gigi Allen. You've right. been gifted a white dvd with zero mm -hmm. information on it it's the the picture of it is gg allen and the uh murder junkies yeah and then below that there's a white and black picture of him bleeding and then covered in shit and it's his final performance before he died yeah and uh apparently it's just that performance like he's i know you were talking that it's like the end of like the todd phillips documentary mm. he did but yeah uh do you have any of those kind of curiosities in your life, you seem a little like I don't need any more trauma. I'm full. I I could I could stand to always. Yeah, I feel that way. Like I don't do you much psychedelics. You when I said anymore. he hit women. Yeah, I can't watch. <laughs> you telling me <laughs> that doesn't sound you like can't a good time. Watch a naked man with a hamster cock covered in shit and blood. Yeah. How hard's he hit him? Attack. <laughs> oh, these are drunk, like haymakers. Then Some of them are fun. pregnant. He's like, peace. Oh, my God. Yeah. See, but that's... See, now that they're pregnant. He used to come out with pizza cutters taped yeah. to his cowboy boots and kick girls in the cunt. No, this is all made up. We're going to see the Jesus movie. <laughs> see, I can make it worse by any means. Yeah. But um, I was you, like, what? Do you, do you have any curiosity? Like, do you listen to punk rock yeah. music? Yeah. 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 So some, uh, I'm going to say some no effects and Pennywise or things like that or is that how old are you 39 27 i know i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> you look like the guy who used to drive me to school when i was four in a cab in a cab yeah he van. shot his wife and hung himself in his own basement that well wait what did he drive you in a cab yeah i had to go to a special yeah. school when i was a, a child <laughs> I'm actually my entire academic career was geared around uh disasters what, what school all, all boys uh vocational school then mm -hmm. like in my day it was uh sld classes slow learning disabilities uh -huh. so you were in uh as a kid the age varied because the classes were so small uh -huh. and they were kind of a fringe to the school and uh you would have people that were three or four years older than you in this in this very hands-on teaching program it was just babysitting so no one got killed Wow. It was awful. A couple of good teachers huh. in the mix, but most of it was uh, terrible. A like couple good teachers in the you mix. You were in school in 97? Uh, I was born in 96. Fuck! Yeah. I started comedy. So I'm my career is as old as you. Yeah, I think that's what... Yeah, yeah. What month were you born? April. Okay, I started June 96. Hmm. With wow. uh, Seth Rogen. Seth wow. and I were doing open mics in in british columbia yeah that's where i started comedy i left hamilton yeah moved out to uh vancouver fresh start 
Has anyone ever said, like, I remember when I used to check IDs at the door of people be from British Columbia. And mm-hmm. I'd be like, that's like three countries, man. British Columbia? Canada, yeah. What do you mean? It's British Columbia and Canada. It's like pick a lane, you know? Oh, f- yeah, I'd look at, I don't know what the <laughs> uh, royal family has a hold on it. But if you ever went to British Columbia, that's it's far west. from Britain, yeah. On the west Culturally, side. Culturally, it might even be, cl- I don't know. That's nuts. So we, this is an open mic that y'all were at? Or was it just No, a- it was part of a, this uh, comedy night that was going on, a monthly thing. And he'd started doing comedy, I think maybe about a year or two before me. Mm-hmm. So he would come down with his grandparents, would come and watch him perform. It was pretty funny. Wow. He, was, he had a little dreadlocks and a, he wore a corn shirt. I remember he had a corn shirt uh-huh. on, which I thought was kind of ambitious but uh that was uh that was a good time to uh relocate to the west coast Hmm. in my 20s 21 22 yeah how easy was that one way ticket you know canada with free health care and um you know within the borders of the country you can show up pretty much anywhere and make a go of it in the country and so, like in America, like, but now you hear about guys coming down here and they get in trouble for having their name on a show or something like that. And they oh get, yeah, well, of course they would. Yeah, yeah, but well, not, in then fact, it wasn't that I, way. I was uh, banned from the U.S. for exactly that reason for seven years, right? Yeah, that's insane. That's why I moved to England. I had to go to England mm-hmm. because I had to acquire an immigration lawyer because my U.S. ban. The lawyer said, "Look, you really can't even go near the border for seven years." But your green card uh, process is going to take about five years. And I'm like, okay, well, I got a couple of years mm-hmm. of, uh, that I could maybe go back to Canada. But I stretched my, my uh, paperwork out. I was just meeting deadlines. Mm-hmm. So five years turned into six and a half years mm-hmm. because of my delaying it. So I could run the process of taking advantage of Europe for um, touring Europe. That's how I put all those dots up there was once you're in london you can fly anywhere in the fucking world so during that time period you weren't allowed to leave canada or any of the eu no i wasn't allowed to enter in the u.s for seven years so the united states saw my ban up not canada not canada no wow the u.s government saw my name on a a website yeah i had somebody call u.s customs and rat on me jesus christ yeah and um i found out later who it was it's a whole nother story but um they, um, yeah, they're, they're like, I go, I'm not being paid, mm-hmm. which was my case. I wasn't being paid. I was being flight in a per diem, but I wasn't receiving any cash yet because my name was on the, this event and there was a ticket link. They follow the money and uh, would say, well, it seems like everybody else is getting paid. Why wouldn't you? Well, it was hearsay at that point so they uh put me down as somebody who was trying to work illegally in the united states wow so you can't even be like i was volunteering my time no. and efforts because Look, the kill tony paid. thing is one thing i'm sure because it's a it's a lottery yeah and there's no exchange of money if right. anything it's gonna break you as a person <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. it might be the worst thing you've ever done in your life to fly to go on vacation and then bomb on the internet where it's there for good yeah. I don't know how many people have lost their jobs from bombing on that show. So a guy recently was just in their uh, one of their pages. I think it was like a Facebook they page. They get them to confess all kinds of shit. I know. They call their families and all kinds. And people are just fucking dumb. <laughs> well, like I do the man on the street thing. And also like, when you put a camera and I'm starting to realize this more and more. It has like a weird... People really see something. Like oh, yeah, you see, I saw your recent yeah. ones. And people are like, is this an interview? Yeah. Blindly just rushing in front of maybe this will create some sort of relevance to my life. Yeah. With some scandal or whatever yeah. it might be. Short of murder, mm-hmm. if just being heard on the internet is wild. Yeah. And then most people are only like one or two easy questions away from being able to ask a hard question. Yeah. Because you can tell some people are like hesitant. But then you ask them one, two, where'd you grow up here? Or the, and then you can ask them, would you suck dick for money? And then they'll be like, yeah, I think I would. You'd be like, what the? And then you just, that took nothing for me to get from, you know, 
cordial street side re- like correspondence to being like asking a question to a drunk person. I think because they've seen so many of the streeter stuff mm-hmm. and it's edited super well. You know you're slicing yeah. half seconds off to get that scene to kind of say right. what it is. And so if people assume whatever's coming out of their mouth is going to look great like that, <laughs> he's just going to put some text on it and a couple of emojis and I'm going to be an internet thing. I'm yeah. going to be the island boys. Yeah. That's what they're hoping. That everyone's hoping to get the splash. I mean, should I'm making it for the hopes that it creates that splash? Yeah, you know what I mean. It's uh, but you're you have a there's some craft where people are just throwing themselves in the wood chipper. Yeah. Uh, have you had anybody DM you and ask you to? No one's asked me to take it down. I have wait had, till something really blows up. Yeah, and the vultures descend and go copyright. Blah, you know. Mm-hmm. That that has happened. The copyright thing has happened. But man, yeah, I, I'm surprised no one's honestly hit me up and been like, "Hey, can you take that down?" Because I've gotten people to say like, "Yeah, I'm a street pharmacist," and <laughs> their full face is on camera, and they're fl- they're showing straight up like twenty eight thousand dollars with the diamonds on one hand, yeah. and I'm like, "Okay," and then I'm you don't want to hate. say, and they're like, "This is my name. <laughs> this is my handle. This is where you can find me." I'm like, "Dog, I, then this may only get you know a thousand views." Yeah. Like, We've all watched the news over the last five years. This is how it goes down. Yeah. This is how you fuck yourself. They're going to end up knocking at my door and be like, what else did you hear from this guy? We need all that raw footage. But you also are really realistically, it's a, that street is a war zone. You're literally a, a, a journalist taking fire. Like you can get a <laughs> bottle in the back of the head. Yeah. Some guy don't talk to my thing. You know what right. I mean? You're dealing with the worst the city has to offer. Yeah, we got into all some gang, lawless gang issues this last one. We did. Oh yeah. We got kind of like uh, surrounded, and my I had to kind of like my camera guy got spooked a little bit because there was like <laughs> ten of them and. Uh, they started throwing up gang signs and saying like free their friend 214 and yeah. shit and then they but I was doing an interview and they just completely like almost tackled my camera guy because they were like in his face like fuck that shit fuck they're from a shit. swarming culture <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh it was a uh, it's on the video it's pretty insane to watch because you're just watching like the camera guys you can feel the, his energy get pulled back and also, you know too is like you really want to make your career as a comedian not on uh white underbelly right with a shotgun face i was doing stand up and i thought it'd be funny to talk to people (laughs) and now this is me and i go to high schools and tell kids not to play to take take your stem courses seriously (laughs) your the influencer route is not going to work out for you (laughs) and if it does you'll end up looking like arby's (laughs) and then you peel off your half face and show them this exposed (laughs) yeah (laughs) like gills (laughs) Yeah, um, I used to be something on TikTok. You want to see what TikTok does to grown men? I, yeah, if, if anyone's seen the VH1 documentaries about behind the music, mm-hmm. the social media ones that are going to be coming down the pipe in a few years of of just derailed, they fall off hard. Yeah, the the, the whole TikTok house period. Aaron Carter. Yeah, did he die? Right. Yeah. yeah. Why are you laughing? I'm not laughing. <laughs> Was I laughing? You kind of smiled and kind of... Do you know who I'm talking about? That just, poor kid? That poor guy, yeah. From the... Uh, the Backstreet Brothers little brother, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Want Candy. Is that one of his jams? Yeah. I wouldn't know. I don't listen to that. What else shit. was What else was it? Well, I mean, this was <laughs> when I was like when I was like eight, you know, the girls were listening to Aaron Carter. Yeah. And how did you meet girls? Aaron, Aaron Carter, Carter shirts. Carter. Yeah. Yep. You had to wear an Aaron Carter shirt <laughs> just to get girls to talk to you. Yeah. What was what another song by him? Who knows? Yeah. So you're saying that it, he would got popular on internet, the internet and it killed him or? I don't know. I've seen a lot of people that mm-hmm. abuse drugs in my life. And he, for a gentleman his age, mm-hmm. uh, he shouldn't have looked that bad. So I don't know what kind of prescription drugs, but it seemed that whole Hollywood uh, Xanax rap culture uh yeah, I could clearly see a lot of these kids were hooked on prescription drugs. Xanax was like huge when I was in high school. Really? I feel like it really was blowing up. I was scared of pills. The, a kid in the grade before us overdosed on Xanax. Mm. And we were like, Ugh. yeah. 
Is that a coma or what? What do you? What happened? Man, I think he had also taken like a painkiller or something. Yeah, but doubled mixed down. With Xanax, and he was like beloved. Everyone loved this kid. <laughs> People got tattoos when they were like seventeen, and I'm like, which? But then, like the following, I knew a guy. One of my best friends, they did Xanax together. And one of them got like so black out on the bars that he started throwing his buddy's furniture out of his bedroom window, yeah. second floor. And then his parents came home in the middle of him throwing shit out the window while he's like trying to wrestle and get him to stop. Yeah. And he just wouldn't stop. Yeah. It's That's like, the kind of shit they get into. The um, <laughs> people, and they don't remember. No, not at all. That's the worst part is, mm. is you have all the mobility of a sober person with zero consequence underneath of it. Yeah. It's like Larry David. Yeah. How he acts. <laughs> <laughs> um, Speaking of, I, uh, I had a Larry David moment recently, and I think you're the first person I get to talk to it about. Uh -oh. My girlfriend had friends over, and I was just back from, you know, hacking it up at the comedy club. What time are we talking? Uh, this is it 11 o'clock? 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Yeah. I listened to them talk for an hour. They're talking about shit in their pants stories. I figure. This is the girls? These are the girls. And, talking uh, about shit in their pants. There's also a guy talking about shit in his pants, one of yeah. the boyfriends. I'm like, okay, these are cool people. We're talking about shit in our pants, you know? And they Lucy Goosey. Lucy Goosey. Yeah. That's, uh, everything's on the table. Then we start talking about like couple things and how like, you know, oh, I, I have, there's a good side of the bed. Everyone knows about the good side of the bed. And then I jokingly said, I'm going to buy a gun just so I can press it into the, my, my girlfriend's lower back in the middle of the night and be like, I want that fucking side of the bed. And they were like, what the fuck? Yeah. They did not think that was funny. Tonight. Maybe because you didn't put it in your asshole. <laughs> you were, they were like, why the small of the back? I doubled down. The dirt ring is like four <laughs> inches down. Just push. <laughs> it's basically, I said, it ended up with me with two finger guns going, if I want to make a joke about a murder-suicide in my house, people are going to laugh. And then I yeah. pointed the guns at the people, and they were like, Did really you have guns in your hands? Not real guns. Oh. Finger guns. Oh, finger guns. I thought you had loaded handguns no. on the table and go, this is no. what I'm going to do when, she, when you guys leave. <laughs> no, I said I would use it to make sure she got things done around the house quicker. Um and <laughs> it was just not going well. Well, because their poo poo pee pee story was that was like the edge for them. And then yeah. you bring in uh, domestic violence. Pistol whip my girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I thought it was funny. No, it's uh, that's why I really don't go out that very much because <laughs> I can't function in just regular situations. I have to have a talk of myself. Just mm. don't get everyone upset. Yeah. Don't they, stir the pot. They had a talk with me. Uh, her and her best friend afterwards. They oh, were, fuck. Yeah. Two of them? Yeah. That's a private conversation. Now, if the that's other persons think. have query, that's a, you got bullied. Right. You should hit her. Yeah. There was a girl there that was offended and she had full face tattoos <laughs> and she had piercings like chains going from yeah. each, in each nostril. A cool girl. And I finally got her friend to laugh when they left because I go, I'm sorry, the girl with you know face tattoos and the tackle holes. box on your yeah. noggin is sensitive yeah sensitive so the only thing she should have had a hard time with is if i tossed her a magnet <laughs> but yeah let's take her down to the colorado river and put one of those those <laughs> magnets that they throw in the river right on her face and just walk her around <laughs> like the pig she is let's call her right now what's her phone number I, she she left i oh. scared them off they left my place it's my favorite thing to do is to scare people off. There is a weird sense of completion to it. Being like, ah. Yeah, it's like an exorcism. <laughs> Except these people are alive. It's like, this room is clean. Yeah. Wow. Just me and me. And me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? No, uh... That's a that's a a tough ride. Is it being on acid by yourself? <laughs> Wait, last night? No, no, no. <laughs> that was no. Uh, oh, I see. How what many you're hits saying. of acid have you taken at a time? Uh, I've never taken more than probably two, and that was probably only once or twice. Okay, I'm a really lightweight. No, really no, lightweight. moderation, especially with that kind of fucking racetrack. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people lose their minds on that stuff. Yeah, and it's the worst. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> I'm just thinking, oh my God, we're both going to die. This is crazy. Yeah. Oh, God, I think I'm losing my fucking mind right now, man. 
I think no. that's fun to say. Uh, mushrooms are lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Ketamine's a psychedelic too. Yeah. That was the fucking thing when I had moved to England. Everybody was taking K like 15 mm -hmm. years ago. It's a... It's oh, like no. G -H thing. Sorry. And GHB. What, G I, people who do GHB recreationally are, are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But they say it's like the greatest thing in the world. That doesn't make any sense to me. It's like being drunk minus the hangover. Oh, okay. Yeah. I could see it. Then. It's kind of, eh. <laughs> but when you uh, when you drink it, you're just you you can feel a bit of your soul die because it's just mm -hmm. a crazy clear chemical that you can just. It has very distinct, uh, like burnt plastic almost in your mouth, and uh, you can see it's far from a grapefruit. Put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know. What's the worst thing you've ever had in your mouth? Uh, My Uncle Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> we used to call him the calamari kid. Um, worst tasted thing ever. Worst tasting thing ever. Man. That's hard. I used to do pest control. <laughs> I've had rat shit in my mouth before. Isn't it taste? Uh, it's just something no one that you're eating is like also maybe just de like composed rats. I had to eat each other. I now. had uh, cuts on my elbows from rat shit. Wow. What? Do you want to hear this? I don't yeah. know why I'm here to ruin your day. No, yeah. The sun's out. Why do you have cuts on your elbows? I fucked this stripper in an abandoned building and Lord. the carpet was full <laughs> of rat shit. So in the morning... There was like a snow angel of rat shit. And I, from fucking my elbows were cut on. Because you know how hard rat shit gets? Yeah, if it's old. And it scratched my uh, arms. Oh, man. But it was like a snow angel. It looked like peppercorns in the shape of a butterfly. You almost restarted the Black Plague. I almost did. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't eat her out. I'm like, oh, you Lord. Chew your food there, Samantha. You said it was an abandoned warehouse? It was a friend's. Uh, he'd been, he moved out. And I'd forgotten. So he'd right. taken all his furniture out of his apartment. But I still had access to the building. When I went there, I was like, fuck. That's right. That He's moving this week. But I thought it was next week. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was out of town. So right there on the fucking Quentin Tarantino mattress. Oof. Rat shit. In the shape of an angel. It was piled up like this. I know how it gets. It got, it's like, you know how, and oh, it rolls so along the carpet and stabbed, stabbed. I thought it was wood chips. It's honestly. Because it was dark. There was no, I couldn't, the light, there was no light. Right. And just on look alone, they're kind of cute. Rats? Little rat shits. Little turds, little hot dog looking things. I, I think goat shit is probably the. Goat shit is pretty cute. Yeah. It just <laughs> comes out, it looks like it's already been wrapped. Yeah, it looks, uh, it's like, it's like polished. And um, has saran wrap. Cat shit is, might be the worst thing in the world. What in the world are they doing? <laughs> I have a cat right now. I hate that cat so much, dude. Is this shit cat? No, he's a good cat. I just hate that he shits. I hate the cat shit too. Inside. Why can't you shit outside like a... And if you like a, shit outside, would you shit this much? Yeah. Or would you... And it's always a big production. Right. As soon as a cat shits, everybody needs to know about it. It's either the smell or Mittens is walking around with sand on his feet. Yeah. Or you hear it. <laughs> yeah. Because they have to bury it. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, Why don't they go outside? I used to do that at parties. I, people that had cats, I'd shit in the litter box That's all the fun. time. Yeah. And I had a couple angry phone calls the following day where the parents had come home and they were in an argument over how big it was <laughs> and it couldn't have been mittens <laughs> did you bury it or did you just leave it on top on top you have to bury it like a real cat no i want them to know that <laughs> dave did that <laughs> you gotta put the, you gotta get your hands in there and play around in the sand a little bit Dude, it was insane it was insane that's part of the reason i moved to vancouver is my late night antics were getting so infamous that i was really kind of turned away at every establishment in the city just based on shitting in litter boxes and doing other things constantly terrorizing anything and everybody 
Huh. It was a uh, was a quite a traumatic time for the city of Hamilton in the early nineties. What were you doing? Lighting off firecrackers? <laughs> I can't even it's hard to confess. Put, pinpoint it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was enough to pack up and get out of town. Okay. For sure. Okay. For sure. Wild um, shit. I, I I just reconnected with a few friends, especially over COVID that I'd grown up with and uh mm-hmm. us them us reminding each other about all the madness that we created in the city in fact that whole there was a a, skateboarding is not a crime have you ever heard of that Mm. that was started in my hometown because of myself and friends we made skateboarding illegal in the city of hamilton really and that was that was the first place no skateboarding allowed it lasted i think about a year Hmm. It was outlawed because of the uh, swarming packs of hellions on skateboards. It was illegal where I went to college at. Yeah. It was illegal to skateboard on the street. Yeah. Yeah. You had to, and there was no designated parks for skateboarding. So essentially they just kind of outlawed it. And you know how many kids got back into the street life because they didn't have that outlet anymore? That's nuts. It's you crazy. It down for a year? It probably cost them a trillion dollars in crime and suffering. Because they took skateboards, a simplistic yeah. thing that is a, a life changer and a, a great way to, uh, not, not only that, but how can you get a cleaner transportation mode than mm. a skateboard? Yeah. And then I'm guessing it snows up there, so there's a big snowboarding community too, or no? In Canada? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Gotcha. There's so world a world class. Kids know how to skateboard. I'm yeah. Sure. So yeah. There's the, the parks were full. Mm. Um, this crossover kids it went from skate parks usually that was something that uh, middle class kid, it was very expensive a snowboard you know I don't know what they're going for now but when you're a kid to outfit yourself with you know thousands of dollars worth of I was like well I would have gotten into hockey skateboard right it's going to cost me a couple hundred bucks yeah uh, you know maybe a grand over a course of a year yeah with shoes and everything yeah yeah anyway I'm not I'm not doing it. I wanted to be able to skateboard so bad when I was a kid, but then I had a club foot, so I could never skateboard. But I can longboard because there's a little bit more stability in it. Ah, okay. But I wore skate attire and hung out with the skate kids and tried to skate, just never could. Yeah. Yeah. It, a lot of that, there was a lot of people who would show up. And again, because we were such terrorists in the city in the 80s and 90s that there would be kids, because it was fashionable, who would come down to the skate park. Right. And they were immediately Lord of the Flies on those kids. Like they were uh, isolated and uh, ejected very quickly. Right. They were immediately attacked and terrorized. The posers, if you will. Right. Exactly. You've seen the movie Kids? I don't think so. Really? It sounds familiar, though. Have you seen Gummo? Yeah. 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 That's what it was like. Gummo? My hometown, when I saw that movie, I was like, it's not far from that. (laughs) <laughs> that's what we were like that downtrodden or like that dilapidated in a sense yeah i would mm. say so there's probably even areas of the city now that would you couldn't tell those mm. apart they still look the same yeah because that's a hard-hitting movie yeah it's hard-hitting <sighs> yeah uh it just that movie looks like it smells like cat piss yeah exactly that it's mean, a cat piss movie P- there's P- an soup. unpleasantness and uneasiness about the movie gummo where it's so well done in your notes. Like, it, it gets weirder than that in real life. Yeah. It's also one of those, it's like an indie film. My Like, my brother loves indie films like that, where he's like... Older how, brother? Younger brother. I'm the oldest. Uh, but he loves, like, he'll be like, you have to watch this movie. You know, oh, God, I'm trying to think. I'll send him a short list. You can forward it to him with stuff that will just ruin his day. Yeah. He loves it. <laughs> yeah I watch movies and go I'm pissed I wasted my time I'm trying to remember the last one I did that with but I can't oh well Barbie <laughs> no <laughs> I watched Poor Things you watched that one Poor Things the one that just came out by the Greek director no uh, it's like a fellow comic o- a friend of ours Ike Rafferty you know mm-hmm. him mm-hmm. He, uh, he's in town but he he has a tattoo of a movie called Dog Tooth and that's one of these Greek films it's a weird movie about 
these kids who are never allowed to leave their parents' house as long as they live. And it just cuts into their life as like 20, 23, 26 year olds. And they're still being protected by their parents. And the dad leaves to work every day. And it's just the weird shenanigans of what that might even look like. It's very unsettling. Yeah. And then he gets... Is, there a, is it an abusive family? Yeah. The isolation is one thing. Yeah. It's crazy. Did they get to leave the house? Or they No. It's no. almost like they're... The Fritzel. Yeah. But they're like normal humans, but they've almost like imposed some traits of autism on them just by not allowing them to socialize in the real world. Yeah. So they get violent. They get they do weird stuff. And then he made poor things with Emma Stone. This was the last movie he made. And that was another weird fucking movie. Uh, Frankenstein kind of, but way, way produced. The first one is like super Greek. They're speaking Greek. Yeah. And it's super strange. Oh, right. Like the aesthetic's not right type yeah. thing. Yeah. No. Yeah, there's... Uh... Have you seen uh, Man Bites Dog? That might be up your alley because there is some dark humor in it. Okay. And it, there's the guy, the lead actor who's a serial killer in it. Uh, is very charismatic and very funny in his own way. Subtitled. Um, I want to say it's Austrian. But anyway, student film guys decide to follow their local serial killer on a spree uh -huh. of a series of murders and it is very funny and yeah. and super dark it's fictional or is it a documentary when i watched it yeah i had to go is this fucking real because foreign films will give you the the uh, lost in translation aspect of it is yeah. like it was so well done and it was documentarian style but after looking at the imdb and researching it i found out yeah because they run into another serial killer with another camera crew and they kill them he <laughs> shoots them through the floor and it's ah, it's it's fucking wild yeah, it sounds like a fucking good, it's so funny it's gotta be made up though you know but we'll uh we'll get the dvd going and see if we can get a gg ggl movie night i'll serve buckets of puke <laughs> of just over all over you guys in the front like oh Marineland, and then we'll fire up the movie and i'll put the heat on high well, the best things i know about him is like apparently like the billionaires used to come to his shows or something like that i heard to like the G. Rich, G. Allen shows yeah millionaires used to come and Probably. stand in the back because they knew he was a cultural phenomenon yeah mm. yeah but slipknot was nowhere not it was not the same effect no <laughs> that <laughs> acid and being you know kind of pop punk <laughs> it's slipknot concert honestly. yeah i know after seeing a gg allen it, it slipknot does look like pop music mm -hmm. yeah really oh yeah and then the apparently they do the same concert every time like it's the same thing every time oh yeah they have it down to a vegas mm -hmm. act mm -hmm. yeah no that's all that shit that's uh that's professional you know metallica yeah they got everything runs on a watch. Mm -hmm. You don't want James Hetfield yelling in your face because you fucked up on the stage set. Yeah. I don't think he'd yell at you. You'd probably just get fired, right? <laughs> that, in fact, that picture up there of my dead friend doing an ollie out of that pool, that's where we'd hang out. That's where all the kids would come. And that was, our, that was a, a waiting pool for, uh, that we ripped all the slides out and painted it and turned into a skate park and that was a contest there it's a dope photo it's a big ass print yeah a friend of mine a friend of mine i can't even remember it he died uh, a number of years ago and uh a fan had come out to the show and said i've got this record and this it's actually a peel sticker so i've had that in a roll hanging around for like 10 years and i'd finally framed it up here but uh yeah huh. skate or die rest in peace phil fader phil fader damn but you were too fat to skate too fat <laughs> <laughs> not too fat it's the i had to ride uh even now i have to ride a mon oh the club foot yeah so i push off with my left foot on the back and i i throw my hip forward to be on the front yeah but like on a skateboard it's just too small of a switch Okay. For uh, but like on a long you need board. A long board, you're fine. Yeah, bigger wheelbase. Just don't have the. Uh, I mean, I can ride a skateboard. I can't kick flip sure. or, or turn it. Surfboard might be more your speed. See, yeah, I I can snowboard. 
I yeah. Like I can just, I just can't skateboard. I can't rollerblade very well either. Where did you snowboard in Texas? I went to Colorado. Ah, okay. Yeah. There you there. go. Cloud so when, uh, did you come into Austin in the last few years? Three or well, maybe four years now coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Before COVID. Uh, or during no, COVID. Right after COVID. Right during, after COVID. I guess. Yeah. Okay. And you show up in Austin and you're no stranger to Texas. Mm -mm. Home. Yeah. But you clearly the town you grew up in would have a lot of um well austin has a reputation and yeah. i don't think the rest of texas gives a shit about what anybody's doing down here no <laughs> every 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 city in texas is like we've got it figured out yeah for for us yeah and that's they're not wrong <laughs> but austin yeah. Austin is just such a different thing than everywhere else in Texas. It's the best Texas city, hands down. Yeah. Uh, I think that all the all the bad parts that people say are misconceptions. Mm. I've never felt that way about a city before. Yeah. Like it's so expensive to live in Austin. I'm like, it's really not. No. I paid the same price to live in Fort Worth. And yeah. I, where there's nothing to do at always. Yeah. And so. even if your cost of living is only a few hundred dollars more here, you're at least getting exposed to some culture and other people. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be in a small town. Were you doing comedy, comedy over there? Yeah, the small town wouldn't be accurate at all because it's just like from Fort Worth to Dallas, there's eight million people. It's mm. a big, one of the biggest superplexes in the world. Okay, but so I would either drive to Fort Worth or go to Dallas every single night. It was only fifteen minutes to Fort Worth, twenty five minutes to Dallas downtown. So it's like, and then like I said, Cowboy Stadium's eight minutes away. It's a really, really interesting place to grow up because it's just suburb for miles and miles and miles strip malls, real malls. And then, yeah, I would go downtown to start doing comedy. And then you'd start to realize, you, you know, you get, find out who the scene is. Yeah. Find out about these other clubs. Yeah. But for the longest time, man, there was just hyenas and they have like a no compete or had a no compete. And they oh, have three clubs. I hate it when they do that shit. Yeah, and they, they completely locked down DFW because they had one club in Fort Worth, one club in Dallas, and one in Plano. And they said within 30 miles, if you work for us, you can't work on the weekends. So it's like you've covered, you've covered like 90 square miles of a, you know, who knows? They should be fired. Yeah. I think they're coming around now because other clubs are starting to open up there. But for a long time, they ran successfully doing that. They were able to, you know... That doesn't really apply here that much. I think there's some internal all. politics and, and bullshit like that, but mm -hmm. uh, the majority of what's going on here is very incestuous. Yeah. There's I, clearly... It's like the gangs in New York. Yeah, I like to get out now. Yeah. Yeah, the travel, like I'm sure you say... like I think our conversations probably lended more to my goal this year, yeah. which was to leave every other month. Yes. Got to, I tell that like all it. you guys... Yeah. Like... You really need to go into different ecosystems. You mm -hmm. never, it's, you never, you. No one's going to be Ron White here. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you're, you really got to go out and get your stage legs, yeah. traveling all over the world, and doing comedy. We've created a little two block vacuum. Yeah, in this town. Yeah, and when you leave the vacuum, you're like, oh. yeah. <laughs> Like oh, all these people think, talk, think, speak differently yeah. at different speeds, and yeah. But in Austin, for whatever reason, man, it's just a great place, and that that's so great to a fault is what I guess we're getting at. So I the comedy scene here is on wires. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like show business wires. Yeah, yeah. So people are not really strong enough to jump that high. Mm-hmm. Be, but they they're being pulled on these wires right uh -huh. through various puppet masters through the business here right it's wild to watch but uh you have shows coming up don't you you'll be at the sunset <laughs> yeah yeah i've got um you want me to plug in right now plug away yeah i just basically right now the biggest thing i'm working on is the works every time podcast this is the one that me and justin essenmacher and mm -hmm. marcus oland are doing and we're just dicking around on that a lot so we're trying to plan a like a leg of like a little tour leg up various yeah. ways up the country and try to spread the podcast news uh more episodes of what the fuck's going on of course what the fuck is going on uh every wednesday it usually drops for the public but every tuesday it airs live at good evening news and that's just you on sixth street on the weekend no security no security a shaky cameraman and a microphone camera woman i did appreciate the smaller microphone yeah you like that i think that's a better 
It just looks great. It, it, the silliness. It has a Steve Martin the little wire to it. Like, yeah. You, you like the little wire? You don't like the wireless one I'm using right now? No. I think there's something about that. It that, just that sounds it so in. bad. That's what I enjoyed about it. Is that yeah. burn the burn? But it is good. Um, to run secondary, Mike, we're not going to get into technical stuff yet, but uh, right. um, yeah. Do you not? Are you not running a show? monthly show i used to run the what the fuck showcase but now i'm kind of just putting all my efforts into the content production side of things yeah because it's the editing wheelhouse is getting really full mm -hmm. and it's got to someone's got to take care of it yeah yeah but uh I've, I've recently hired an editor and that's helping a lot so he takes care of the podcast and what the fuck now and he's a killer he does great yeah huh. well it looks like we've come to an end <laughs> um where can people find you? At Philip Garcia Comedy on everything. Two L's and Philip. You just type that in. Philip Garcia Comedy. Um, you can find me in uh, Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, uh, Thunder Bay, Hamilton, Toronto, uh, Denmark, Germany, and Poland. That will be, Europe will be in June. Canada will be in uh, April. And then, anyway, go to my website. All the dates are on there. But uh, there's going to be some uh, Iceland shows and some Norwegian shows. I'm going to do some Scandinavian dates. And I want to get back to Scotland at some point, I think, maybe in the later in the year. But uh, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Let's get baked. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> How long did we go? Uh, I don't know. Because I, uh, my monitor blacked out on me. It says. Oh, you record into the camera, huh? Yeah. No idea. Let's see if I got a text, if I text anybody. Oh, I... Did you have to leave it? Uh, I just gotta leave here in like 15 minutes or so. We would like to see most of the human race killed off because it is unworthy. It is unworthy of the gift of life. I don't care what society thinks. They're nothing anyway. They're no better than me. Until we have a safe word, we will not stop. Have you ever thought what it would be like to see a person's head amputated thing? Think of things so horrible that the human mind cannot imagine them. See all this and more when you see on stage, in person, that crazy mixed up. I like being set apart from people. I like to be hated. Safe word with Jason Hurd.